Welcome to this video presentation which introduces the frequency domain view of signals. So hopefully after this session you'll recognize that sinusoidal signals are represented as single spikes in the frequency domain. So there's a focus today on this, this se opening session on sinusoidal signals. Uh, and the second thing is I'd like you to appreciate that a signal's frequency content does not depend on its duration. And that's on condition that the frequency is constant throughout the duration of the signal. That's almost stating the obvious and hopefully it'll make sense by the end of the session. So let's just clear that first of all. Um, now so far you have seen um, signals um, in the time domain only. Well, I haven't explicitly called it the time domain but you've seen signals um, as they evolve over time. So we, we generally when we plot signals we have amplitude versus time. And what I'll show here now is, is a sinusoidal waveform. Okay, so that's a typical shape of a sinusoidal waveform. Not a fantastic drawing, but hopefully you get the idea. And in today's session we're going to take a look at this particular type of signal. And the reason we do that is because any signal can be made up of a sum of sinusoids. And, and this is a theory that has been proven by a mathematician called Jean-Baptiste Fourier. Um, so we're going to start off with the very basic signals which in the frequency domain are sinusoids okay um so i'm going to move into matlab now where i've created those signals already so i've created uh four different signals each uh so i've got a 200 hertz signals 800 hertz signals and they're all of different duration so one second and two second duration uh, and we'll just take a look at one of the waveforms so there's the 800 hertz waveform, one second long. Uh, we can't see the sinusoidal nature because we're zoomed out too far. We've basically got one second. Uh, so we've got 800 cycles. Uh, and there's the sinusoidal waveform. When we zoom in we can see it more clearly. Okay. Um, and I suppose it's worth noting that the amplitude is 0 0.25. The amplitude of the 200 hertz tones are the same. So you can see the amplitude is the same, and we zoom in, there's the sinusoidal, you can see them. Okay, so all of those four signals are basically sinusoids. Um, now, if I was to, if I, when I play this back, uh, I'm going I'm gonna to play it back as an audio signal, because our auditory systems um, are very good at differentiating between frequencies. So, 200 hertz signal play back the two second version. Okay, and we have to specify the sampling rate. Those signals were s created uh, using a sampling rate of 20.5 kilohertz. So that's a standard sampling rate for audio. Um, and this is what it sounds like. And now let's play back the 800 hertz signal. And you'll, you'll be able to differentiate between these very easily. Now both of those signals were at a constant frequency. They were fixed at 800 and 200 hertz um, constantly throughout the duration of the signal. Um, so we can hear the difference between those signals. Now what we'd like to do is come up with a nice visual representation of those signals uh, which tells us, which, which shows us the frequency content very very easily. We can work out the frequency content by looking at the time domain signal because if I opened up the time domain signal, we'll look at one of them, and I know the duration, so the duration there is one second, I could count the number of cycles and work out what the frequency of that um, signal is. But that's very slow. We're going to use a, d a different representation of the signal to, to explicitly show that it's a 200 or 800 hertz signal. Um, and I put together a, a function in MATLAB just to make things easy for myself uh, called FreakPlot. It's not a, a standard MATLAB function, it's just one I put together for this presentation. But it just shows what the frequency, um, the frequency domain view of these signals look like. Um, now, I'll, I'll, I've played back the two second version, so I'll plot the frequency content of the two second version. And this, this, so this is the plot of the frequency content of 
the 200 Hz tone. Uh, and you can see that we have this single spike at two, a value of 200 Hz. So we have a horizontal axis labeled as frequency and we have a vertical axis labeled as magnitude. Okay. Uh, so with our time domain view that we're used to, we had a, a, a vertical axis labeled as amplitude rather than magnitude and we had the horizontal axis labeled as frequency for, uh, as opposed to um, time. Um, so I suppose it's important to remember that magnitude is sort of an absolute ver uh, absolute value of, of amplitude. So um, they are similar but they're that subtle difference. Magnitude only has positive values associated with it. Um, Okay, so that's the frequency domain view of the sinusoidal waveform at 200 hertz, single spike at 200 hertz. The frequency domain view of a of the 800 hertz um, tone will have a single spike at a value of 800 along the frequency axis. So again, the frequency axis is this horizontal one. We have a single spike at 800 hertz, and I should have said to you the magnitude is 0 0.25 and as I said earlier on each of these signals has a, a, an amplitude of 0 0.25 so when we viewed the, those signals in the time domain we saw that the amplitude was 0 0.25 so the magnitude is 0 0.25 when we view it in the frequency domain okay so in both of those cases we plot two pure frequency components okay and when we have when I say a frequency component, a frequency component is a sinusoidal type shape. Okay. Um, so there's a bit of terminology to get used to and hopefully you will do over time. What I'd like to do now is create a new signal. In this case I'm going to add two tones together. So we'll add the 800 hertz tone. We'll add the two second version of it. Plus um, the 200 hertz tone, two seconds, and create a new signal. Now, when you listen to this, you should be able to hear the two frequency values present in the signal. So you should hear a high frequency component and a low frequency component. Um, let's just play it back. So both sinusoids are present in that uh, signal and we can plot the signal. If we zoom in we get some idea of the shape of the signal. So this is the addition of a 200 hertz tone with a 800 hertz tone. And you can almost pick out well, this, well I'll just bring that into a paste area. Um, Okay, um, so what I, I wanted to point out, you can almost see the 800 hertz part is this fast changing part here, and it's been added together. So th th that's the 800 hertz part. So you can, oh, there's the 800 hertz. That red matches up, and the 200 hertz is the slowly, more slowly changing part. You can almost see the two different. Um, frequencies present in that signal. Um, maybe not too easily but um, I suppose with experience you can see it a little bit easier than possibly at first glance. Um, but switching back to MATLAB anyway, there's the, that's what the signal looks like and we can hear the signal again. Now if we plot that in the frequency domain what I expect to see now is two spikes. So when you have two sinusoidal waveforms present in a signal you would see two spikes. So let's do that. And there we go. We have two spikes. And we can see that each of the spikes is of the same amplitude. Now the reason for that is because both were the same amplitude before the addition. Um, I could create a new signal. Maybe I'll half the um, so I'm multiplying the 200 hertz signal by 0 0.25, so I'm going to half that. If I do a frequency domain plot of that, I should see that the spike associated with the 200 hertz component will be halved. 
So there we go. And that's a frequency domain view of that signal. Um, now, the last thing I'd like to show you is I, I, I'm going to plot the frequency content of um, the 800 hertz. And there it is. So we get a spike at 800 hertz. Now, that's a two second duration signal. Okay? And well, let's listen to the two. Let's we'll listen to the two second version. Or we we'll listen to the one second version. Now you can hear that the frequency doesn't change in either of them. It's just the duration. So when I view that signal in the frequency domain, if I view it in the one second version rather than the two second version, the frequency content should be exactly the same. And there we go. Still got the amplitude of 0 0.25, or sorry, the magnitude of 0 0.25, and we got a spike at 800 hertz. So it doesn't matter what the duration of the signal was. That signal contained an 800 hertz sinusoidal waveform. Therefore, we'll get a spike at 800 hertz when we view that signal in the frequency domain. Okay. Um, well, there's not a huge amount covered in this presentation, these are key points. So you really need to get a grasp on this um, and be able to recognize um, what sinusoidal waveforms will look like when you view them in the time domain and in the frequency domain. So in the time domain, you should have this nice oscillating waveform. In the frequency domain, you get a single spike. Now the reason why we're focusing on sinusoids is because all signals can be represented or uh, can be broken down into a sum of sinusoids. So that's the reason why we're focusing on sinusoids. Okay. Um, okay, so try to get those key points and I'll see you in the next presentation.